I don't know. I feel like I'm low. Yeah, I'm low. Hold on. Oh my god. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shalia, if this is your first time here. And so I look a little bit disheveled and a little bit out of it, and that is because I literally just did all of this to show you guys something and then I'm taking it right off so I didn't even bother to take my headband off like once my makeup was finished um but a couple days ago on my Instagram I posted a video and 10 hours later I posted another video after I worked in a high volume really hot restaurant and my makeup looked exactly the same and I got tons of messages like if I still had them I would show them to you on my uh, in my DMs asking me how I got my makeup to last as long as I did and I thought it was really important for me to stop what I was doing today and show you guys exactly what I do and how I achieve it so that's basically what we're doing in this video please use this video as a guide and not necessarily like a bylaw or like you know a necessity take the products uh, with a grain of salt and just understand that these are just products that I use, products that I have exposed myself to, and right now what I have readily accessible, by no means are they products that you guys need to get in order to achieve a long-lasting look. Also, there are probably products that are even better than I have, or even some that cost more, of course, but like I said, that's not what it's about. It's more so the steps that I take, how I do it, and what actual items I'm using so foundation concealer moisturizer primer etc etc um I know I just rambled on a little bit but if you haven't already please don't forget to subscribe to my channel I can't wait to show you guys more videos and show you guys what I've got planned for you in the very near future and also in the future future um Give this video a thumbs up. I've lost my train of thought. Give this video a thumbs up at the end if you enjoyed it. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment box below if you've got something nice to say. Click the bell so you guys get notified. I don't want YouTube to try to play you and not show you guys what I've got for you because that's not fun. Um, and yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's just jump right into it. So I'll see you guys in a second. Alright guys, so now that you guys understand exactly what it is that we're going to be doing in this video, I'm going to jump right into it. I did my eyes and my brows, obviously, because this is, uh, has absolutely nothing to do with, bleh, with what we're going to be doing today. Um, well, right now. So, um, I'm going to just jump right into it. I'm going to go step by step. Hopefully it doesn't take me too long to really understand exactly what it is that I'll be doing. Also, just broke a nail. Great. So there's a few steps that I take before I start my actual makeup routine that I feel like are super, super important to how long my makeup actually lasts throughout the day. Um, I have done my makeup without these things and later been pissed off. Wow, that alcohol bottle looks really shitty in the bag. So, uh, there's a few things, there's a few steps, okay, get my mind together, <sniffs> fix it, alright, so, there's a few steps I take prior to actually doing my makeup that I feel like are super important, I've done them, I've done my makeup without them, and noticed a massive difference in my makeup, so, when I say these items, you don't actually have to use these specific items, I'm just telling you to get things that work for your skincare uh, for your skin type, for your budget, for your look, everything. This is not a matter of actually achieving exactly what I look like. It's more so a matter of getting your makeup to last long. Some things are going to work better for me than they do for others. Some things are going to work better for others than they do for me. But again, these are just things that you steps you need to take. And you're still going to have to do a little bit of homework in terms of finding your own skin. So finding what works for your own skin. Um, I'm going to tell you guys the type of skin I have. And then if you also have that type of skin, this might actually work wonders for you. So the first thing you always want to do is start with clean skin. I wash my face right before I do my makeup every single day. If you wake up at 8, but you're not going to do your makeup until 12 wash your face at like 11 you know what I mean like you want really good fresh clean skin that's oil free etc 
etc. If you typically start your day with a toner, that's great too. If you don't, it's okay. No big deal. Um, I do uh, just to help keep my acne at bay and I find it really works. I use the Ula Henriksen Oil Force Control Toner. Um, afterwards, I go in with my moisturizer. You do not want to forget moisturizer. I'm sure that a lot of you are saying to yourselves, well, I want my makeup to last longer. Why do I need a moisturizer? Putting a moisturizer on your skin makes does wonders. First of all, it acts as one layer of protection for your skin that a lot of people love to forget as if it doesn't really matter. It does. Um, dry skin and makeup, you don't want it. You don't want it. It's going to dry your skin out more. It's going to cause your makeup to separate. It's going to cause your makeup to crack. It's going to cause like your, your makeup to like pick up in areas where you don't want it to. And so as a whole, you want to start with moisturizer. I'm sure you're thinking, I have really oily skin. Why do I want to put more moisture into my skin? Because oil is not what you want on your makeup. You do want moisture. You don't want oil. Two very, very, very different things. Also, if you're using the right kind of moisturizers, it also can kind of help keep your oil at bay. So, tip. Next, I use a primer. I know there's plenty of people out there who don't like primers, who don't believe in them. I do. I'm a big fan of them. Uh, I'm going to give you guys two different primers today that I use on a day-to-day. -day. Uh, so first is the Milk Hydro Grip. I think this is what this calls. Yes. The Hydro Grip Primer. Also, I use the Tatcha the Silk Canvas Primer. These are my two ride or die primers. Do I have others I like? Yes, but if I get into that, we'll be going all day. Uh, so today, I'm going to use the uh, Tatcha <laughs> the Silk Canvas. Um, so while I was talking, my moisturizer dried down. It's a really important step. You want to make sure there's no residue, there's no stickiness, there's nothing. You really want to make sure that it dries down. If you keep piling liquid on top of liquid on top of liquid, it never dries down. Your foundation's going to slide. It's not going to stay where you need it to. And then that also causes your makeup to separate earlier during the day. So next we're going to go in with primer. Um... With primer, I can't stress this enough, you guys, honestly, you do not want to over-prime your face because what ends up happening is you put so much primer on that eventually the primer itself starts to slide, taking your makeup with it. Don't nobody want that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I always start with less. Let's think with this entire makeup today. Less is more. Start with less. Build your way up. The more you start with, the harder it is to blend it all out, the harder it is to get it all to stay, and that's not what we want. So the idea is put less on, and if you need more, you can always add more. It's harder, to, it's easier to add than it is to take away. So now that that's done, I'm going to let my primer dry down, although this is a pretty dry primer, so you don't really have to wait. If you're going to use something a little bit more liquidy, even something like the Hydro Grip, uh, you want to let it dry. Something like the Hydro Grip Primer is still going to have some tackiness to it, which is great, but you want to understand the difference between wet and tacky. If you're going to use it while it's wet, that's a no-go. You want to do it while it's tacky, that's great. If you let it dry down too much, done work. So next, whether it is a high, a, a high coverage, a full coverage, a medium coverage, or a light coverage foundation, you want to go ahead and go in. I am a firm believer in Beauty Blender. Not any other blender, not a Morphe blender, not a drugstore blender, not a dose blender. No. Beauty Blender. Now, can you use other blenders? Absolutely. Am I downplaying any of those other, those other blenders? Absolutely not. I have a Morphe blender, I have a Fenty blender, I have a drugstore blender. I just find that for foundation, an actual beauty blender is my ride or die. Real Techniques is actually also really great too. Um, so I start with like a fair amount, nothing too little, nothing too much. And you want to start your foundation in the area where you need the most coverage. So for that, for me, it's going to be right around this area and right around this area here. So I always put my foundation there to start. And then... I blend it out everywhere else. So I tend to add a little bit more in this area, just a little, and then I don't, I try not to pull it up everywhere else too far. Like I'll 
find those areas like I'll take a second to really locate where it is that I need the coverage because if I if I just keep adding it and adding it and adding it all it's gonna do is slip off later and once again anybody got time for that all right once your foundation is on you also want to wait for that to dry I know this sounds like a long like drawn out process but I promise I promise I promise if you allow it the opportunity to dry down and then add the next and then add the next you'll notice a drastic difference in the longevity of your makeup I cannot say this enough I cannot stress this enough I don't know what else I can say to convince you <laughs> so now that my foundation is dry I'm gonna go in with my concealer and we're just going to contour and highlight like we normally would. I'm just going to edit this out so you guys won't really notice it, but I am going to let my under eye concealer sit for a little while before I blend it out because the more you allow it to really seep into the skin, the longer it's going to stay. So, now we wait. Okay, so now we're going to take the pointed side of the blender and we're going to blend everything in. We're going to start um, in the areas where your makeup tends to fade the least. So for me, I always notice separation around this area first. So that's what we're going to blend last. We're going to allow the concealer to sit there the longest. I'm going to go right up my nose and... Blend out right around these areas. Alright, and then once I'm pretty happy with where everything else, the once I'm pretty happy with the way everything else is blended in, then I'm gonna move on to my under eye. Um, I tend to start lower down and then work my way in. Um, like, I honestly don't have a rhyme or reason for it. Um, it's just something that I've done for a while. I guess also I like to keep most of the product in this area where I have natural separation. Because um, I have, like, creases in my actual skin. So there's no way to, like, stop the makeup from creasing there. So, yeah. All right, and then... Once that's all blended in... Right, then, by no means is this next step necessary, you guys. This is just, like, security for me. I like to add a lighter concealer right under here. I have, like, eye dips right here that a lot of people don't notice but myself because I'm a crazy person um, that I like to conceal. So while I contour, I like to um, let this, like, settle in to my skin. So next we're just going to buff out our contour like normal. I like to do this while there's no powder because it just allows me to blend in the two creams together without there being a lot of like skipping or um, patchiness. I, I like, I just found that this just works best for me. If you do it in another order, I'm sure it'll be fine as well. It's just personal preference. Then once I've done that, I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to blend this back out. Well, not back out, but I'm going to blend it out. Alright, then next, if there's any one thing that you want to take from this video, any one, invest in a good setting powder. I'm not saying spend $1,000 or even $40, it's not necessary. Find one that works great for your skin, whether it's Laura Mercier, Hourglass, um, Fenty, ABH. Ben Nye, uh, RCMA, Beauty Bakery, every, like, there are tons of great 
um, setting powders out there, find the one that works for you. Don't just buy one and stick with it. Like, really, like, when that one's empty, try a new one. Switch it up. And if it doesn't work, return it and get another one. You want to keep your beauty blender damp but not wet. And then start in the area that's going to separate first. And like I told you guys earlier, it's going to be here for me. And really press, I mean, not hard, but like press your setting powder in. Like I see a lot of people do this with brushes. And I just notice, like I personally, and this could just be me. I, it could just be my skin. I personally don't find that my makeup lasts as long when I do it with a brush. I'm going a little ham right now, my bad. I'll be one powdery bitch. <sighs> Wanna really make sure you're pressing it in and not just like do do like really push it in. You want you want the powder to like absorb the moisture. Like I always tell people when I'm done I look like Casper the Ghost. It's not a joke. Like I seriously look like Casper the Ghost. And I'm okay with that because my makeup literally will hold me down till tomorrow. <laughs> so I like to bake and I like to let it uh, really seep in. So nothing crazy, literally maybe like two minutes. Sometimes, honestly, even less. A nice little like trick for me to make sure I don't bake too long is I like to take that time and just go ahead and add my... Um, bronzer. It helps me, like, time how long I've been baking for. And then, once that's done, I literally ooh, just brush it off. Alright, so now I'm sure a lot of you are looking at me like, you look crazy. You're right, I do. I look absolutely batshit nuts. But this is the stage where I add my blush, my highlighter, and my mascara and my lips. Make it quick. Heavy. Ooh. Then, setting spray. You don't want to go overboard with the setting spray. A neat little trick for me is I do, I count to two over here. I count to two over here and then I just go down the center a light little layer of setting spray works great for me if you are super dry you might want to go a little bit heavier with setting spray of course just because you need it more uh, obviously than I do I don't have really dry skin then while the setting spray is still a little wet is when I add my highlighter mm. a fun little trick too is to add a hint of setting spray to your brush after you put a little bit of highlighter on it only because I don't like to wet my brush and then dip it back in the pan um, I just find that it like messes up my product a little bit and I hate that I'm just gonna pop a little gloss on because I don't really think I need to get into like a step-by-step -step with lips <laughs> Alright guys, and honestly, that concludes this video. Um, I'm not going anywhere, so I'm not even going to bother to like take my headband off and like do my ear put, do my earrings. <laughs> put my earrings on. Um, I just wanted to make this super short, quick, sweet, concise, and to the point. Um, so you guys get an idea of exactly what it is that I do, exactly how it is that I get my makeup to last so long. I honestly don't think I'm doing anything else that other people aren't doing. I just think sometimes people don't explain 100% step by step what they're doing and why it is that they're doing what they're doing in order to get not only the look that they're achieve they, they are wanting that they are trying to achieve, but also the longevity of the look that they have achieved. And I think that's super super important cuz it takes time to get anywhere. So, like, even if I get ready at home and I'm going to dinner, it takes me still, like, an hour to get to dinner. So, if my makeup looks like crap by the time I get to dinner, like, how does that work for me? That doesn't. Yeah, I look great right now but, now, but now I'm at my destination and I look like crap. So, I think that is, like, really important and I wanted to really explain that these 
things do work and that these these steps do matter so um yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this and like I said in the beginning of this video if you haven't already please don't forget to like subscribe comment uh, down below and of course if you haven't followed me yet on Instagram make sure you hit my insta I'm gonna leave it right there um, and I'll see you guys all in my very next video it was a pleasure as always I love each and every one of you and have a great day week month whatever it is bye guys